Are we leaking is the question. Yes. From inside the garage. When it should have been in the report. I see the flashing around the window. Very poor flashing job. The step is too high. I tripped on it going up. I can't understand why the inspector, uh, for whom this is their, his profession, didn't see these things. Andrew bought a nice little house in a nice friendly neighborhood. Got a home inspection. Report comes back in, a lot of things are acceptable, acceptable, acceptable. However, it has a lot of problems. And we're gonna go through that house with a fine tooth comb and we're gonna make it right. We chose this neighborhood primarily because there were so many young families on the street and I uh, thought it had a nice community feel. We like to rollerblade and uh, we, we go out and we put our daughter in a jogging stroller. We all sort of go for a family uh, run or boot around the uh, neighborhood, which is always a good laugh. People are always impressed with our... Uh... Yeah, it's like, kind of like a circus act or something. Yeah. <laughs> the house seemed fairly functional, like it had the essentials or, you know, or so it appeared. I had everything on our checklist. Three bedrooms, two bathrooms, uh, a garage, which we didn't have before, and that's a really nice feature. But we felt the house was cozy. It had a good feel to it. We liked the windows, and uh, but mostly the location. We um, got a home inspection, and the inspector took a couple hours to go through the house, and we were present for that. Most items of concern, he said, were you know minor. There was a, a crack in the foundation down in the basement. He was very reassuring yeah, yeah, about yeah, the crack right. and saying, you know, that's a typical sort of shifting right. crack that we see. Yeah. The pooling on the top of the garage uh, was visible. Again, it was something that he didn't think was necessarily uh, a problem. When we turned on the hose for the first time in the spring, we think probably some water backed up. And as a result, some water puddled on the floor in front of the kitchen sink. And uh, there was a lot of mold underneath. You know, you pay good money for a home, and it's the biggest financial commitment you're going to make. And then you try to validate that purchase by getting a professional in to check it all and to have things go wrong after you've done that. It's, you know, it's frustrating. We're so excited for Mike to come. Nora has drawn Mike a poster, and, and she drew Mike with a saw. <laughs> and that's him fixing our house, she said. Puppy. <laughs> Hi, Mike. Hi, how are you doing? Thanks for coming. Melissa. That's right. Andrew. Yeah. Hi, nice Mike. to meet you. I'm Mike. Thanks Who's for this? coming. This Who's is this? Kasia. Hi, Kasia. How you doing? Good day. Oh, I see you. Just girl. one of those. Uh, go ahead, pat me. I got a new friend. <laughs> Do you mind if we start outside? Yeah, yeah that's perfect. great. Okay, yeah. Come on out. Okay. You want to come out, too? You want to come, Kasia? I can tell you're a good okay. girl. All right, let's talk about the garage. That's come on right. Since that's why I'm here. And I knew when I saw the pictures, it's just my world of what I'm used to seeing. But driving up is a whole other ball game. That is one of the crappiest rails I've ever seen. You wouldn't want to yeah, lean on it. it. So are we leaking is the question. Yes. From inside the garage. It's definitely cooler in here. I kind of yeah. like that. Maybe we should close the door. I love my job. <laughs> OK, so everything was visual here when you came in. Correct. OK, and what did the inspector tell you? Because I didn't really read anything in the report, so this may may have been a verbal. I don't even remember if we looked at it with the garage door down or not. Ah, yeah. so you had walked in, the garage door is open, yeah. nobody looked so, above the garage door. Yeah. That makes total sense. Mm -hmm. I see all kinds of leakage here. Yeah. Right across, look at the corner. You're already actually molding in the corner. Right. Somebody's done a repair. We have OSB, we have plywood. Oh, yeah. So somebody's done something. Don't know when it was done. How old is this house? Uh, 1988. 1988, okay, that makes sense. Somebody has already tried to repair this roof and it's still leaking. So I think we need to see why. Mm -hmm. Can we go in? Sure. Okay, let's go. That's a soft spot right there. And we don't want that on a flat roof, because anywhere there's a soft spot means one of two things. It was just a poor sheeting or poor structure job, or it's an area that's rotting away. Here's the point where we see for sure there was a puddle of water. This shows that water sits here a lot. 
The inspector assured us that it was sort of a natural process and there's nothing to worry about. And I said, oh, like, is this puddle a problem? And uh, he said, no, no, you know, it looks like a good seal. And that's typical for flat roofs. And we have never had a house with a flat roof, so we mm. just took his word for it. Um, it and obviously it's turned out that puddling's not normal on flat roof. A flat roof should be sloped. We want to control water. Don't just go level and expect water to find the scupper. This is what we call a scupper. This is the only spot that water will get out and get down. But still water sits here, which means this area is lower than this area. Yeah. So we definitely have water penetrating on the verticals all the way around. And I'm assuming at this point, that window. One way or the other, I'm taking it down. That's for sure. We have a drummer in the house. Yeah. Who's the drummer? Are you, are you, oh. Oh, are you a pro? Well, I've been in a few bands back in the day. OK. Where's the crack? Uh, it's just over here. OK, cracks, you know what, do not worry me vertically. Okay. They only worry me if they leak. Right. There's a leak. No. OK, I don't see signs of water. So yeah. that means that we have a good coating on the basement. Great. And okay. more than likely, 19 years ago, they coated this well. This is an electronic air cleaner. Right. Mm -hmm. What happens is as the dust goes through electronically, it zaps the dust particles. So if I hit the pipes and it's dropping off dust on the inside of the ductwork and it's zapping it, that means you need your duct cleaned. We had a guy in here at the beginning of the winter. He just checked the pilot light, but we didn't actually have a cleaning done. You should get a cleaning. Yeah. You want to do it at least, at least yeah. once a year, hopefully twice a year. There's this plug that presumably is supposed to be plugged in somewhere. That's usually not the way to do this. This is your humostat for the humidifier. This should have been picked up by the home inspector, I'll tell you right now. OK, let's work our way upstairs. OK. All right. Thank you. Drape the holes from the humidifier all over the floor <laughs> to the drain. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm leaking here. Yep. Why am I leaking here? What I want to hear the home inspector say is, I'd like to go back and close the door and take a look at this area to see if there's any signs of water coming in. There's water coming in. Obviously, we have issues. Somebody's done a repair. Water doesn't sit here. It actually moves this way and sits here. Things that we thought were minor have turned out to be the major problems. OK, I read in the report, no handrail downstairs. Somebody's made some changes. They did have it there. And as they were finishing the place, they took it down. But I don't see any tie-ins at the bottom. So yes, we need a rail. So you have new floors, yeah. I, I can tell. Ceramic tile countertop. This is probably, based on looking at the sink and top, minimum 12 years ago they did this in that neighborhood. So we do have a mold buildup on the back, mm -hmm. right on the cabinets. Why isn't that shut off? Did you read this in the report? Nope. I didn't read it in the report. Yeah. That line is for an old garburetor. All right, I'm going to look into that. Uh, what was in the report for electrical? I read something about a GFI failing. Um, Upstairs bathroom. OK, and then you said it was failing. Did you have it fixed? No. Did you read the report? Yes. Got it fixed. OK, it's electrical. You got safety. You got a little girl here, right? So get it fixed. It's important. This is rather strange. What was here? There was a, a window seat, but it yes. was such that it, you couldn't really sit on it. So we thought we, we would rather have the floor space. When we did remove that, it revealed that the drywall that it was in behind there beneath the window and the window sill um, was all moldy and water damaged. And it turns out when I took out one section, I realized that the drywall was so waterlogged that it just came out like paper mache. I'm going to go check the rest of your house. OK. Thank you. And you know, I'll start ripping things apart. I'm going to bring in the right people. We're going to look at this in detail. Detail, and then I'll bring you back to show you what I found. Well, it's cooler in here. It's a shame the home inspector didn't even notice that there was OSB and plywood. That's an indication that there was already a problem earlier. So we're seeing total signs of moisture. Water is soaking right through the base of the posts that are bolted directly to the roof, as well as seeping through the brick sills. The home inspector didn't think to close the door. 
What I want to hear the home inspector say is, I'd like to go back and close the door and take a look at this area to see if there's any signs of water coming in. There's water coming in. The corner, what do I see? From the outside, we saw the parge falling out. And on the inside, there's actually almost nothing there in the corner. I bet you I could practically poke a hole through it. That was not in the report. What was in the report was that it was spalling on the outside. Let's go outside. What's the height of this step here? It is nine and a half inches. What is minimum code? Not to exceed seven and seven eighths. So, the step is too high. I tripped on it going up. I see the flashing around the window. Very poor flashing job. Point it out. Take a picture. Tell the homeowners about it. It's definitely leaking from the very top of that flashing. How do I know? Because it's away from the wall. If water comes in, what will it do? It's wood. It will damage it. When we can look underneath and we see all the holes. These are all entrance points for A, cold breeze. B, critters. If they can get in, they'll get in. They'll want to come in. Make sure it's sealed. And I come back and I see the deck. What I'm looking at is structure. I don't care about the finish. Finish we can always make good again. This deck is leaning this way. It's sunk down about three inches based on what I see by looking down the handrail because you can see how high it is against the wall. It was not in the report. How come this wasn't in the report? If that hot side touches the box, it just pop. And if your finger happens to be there, you may get a shock, you may get burnt. You know, little things like this really need to be put in a report to say, bring in a licensed electrical contractor to take a look at the house to make sure it's up to par. The homeowners did pull off the drywall, which is good. But what are we seeing is definite moisture issues. We have lots of air movement on the top. So let's try and get back to the exterior sheathing where we can see that there's definitely lots of moisture on the outside of this. Do I just say it probably is fine, or do I open it up? Guess what Damon's gonna be doing. Visually, we see issues with the window, okay? Yeah. The home inspector completely said nothing about this other than a little bit of dry water that we see there on the yeah. sill, right? We can tell that somebody's added a flashing after the fact. These are wood windows. Right. And I know for a fact that was not there before. Mm -hmm. I got a bad feeling we're going to be pulling this out and doing a new window. Yeah, OK. So we're going to start by opening it up on the inside, pull the insulation, get yeah. everything out, clean it up. And I want you to drop the bulkhead in the front so we can do a visual on the inside. I'm not going to fix the bottom and not look at the top. I looked at this. This is real simple. Let's get a couple of new stones underneath yeah. the barbecue and just pull the fascia off here, get this picked up, and put some supports on it. You think the inspector would have said the rails are yeah. like you can, the kids can climb the rails. They're yeah. supposed to be vertical, not horizontal. Let's have them check out that gas line. Is this a gas fireplace? Yes. So let's have Gary take a look at it and see if he's fine with it. OK. OK? All right. Let's start with the kitchen. OK. What is this? Yeah, no kidding. That's leaking like a sieve. That's I bet. right. Is it leaking from the back of the sink? Maybe. I don't but see right now, here. we know we're leaking from here. So, what do we see here? I see a lot of moisture and a lot of air movement. <clears throat> Very good, sir. That's exactly it. This was a bench that was sitting here. We do see all the issues here. We see the wood that is all wet in the background. So, strip it all. Let's take a really good look at it. Yeah. To the dungeon. Let's have them check the furnace. Let's confirm there's no cracks in it, that everything's fine. We have leakage in the front. I can already hear it, yeah. feel it. Let's find out why this is uh, covering it up. I don't like the way the drainage hose is. What really upsets me is it's not in the report. As yeah. simple things as to educate the homeowner on how this should be fixed. The one line here obviously has been added later, not by a licensed electrical contractor, so have it looked at. OK. Now, the homeowner talked about the central vac. She said when she turned on the central vac and was using it, within five minutes, the smoke detector went off. First question I asked is, when's the last time you changed the bag? Because, you know, this, it, these start to stink after yeah. a while. I've got to name a number to someone that let's call them up. Let's have them take a look at the system, see if there's any issues with it whatsoever. I'm leaking here. Yeah. Why am I leaking here? I'm going to find out. I have water here and here. Yep. Oh, I know why. And I'm going to show you. Is there a railing up there? I'm going to show you. Someone came in as a roofer and did a half-decent roof. Right. 
However, if you, again you notice it's leaking from that edge across there, yep. slightly across the front, right. I think that somebody's tried to solve all the water problems and just totally brain farted and did not see that water's penetrating yeah. the mortar. I want a whole precast zone here. So you have any problems? Call me. You don't have any problems? I'll be in Cuba. I'll meet you there. Yeah, I guess I don't have weeks. to go to Cuba. Cuba would be fun. I want to go on a vacation. Yeah? I really do. I After want to we're go done away. this, can we join you? Sure. There's so much future waiting to happen. He uncovered a lot of things that weren't mentioned uh, by the home inspector. Normally, you know, we'd be very concerned, but uh, we know it's Mike, and so he, uh, he assures us that he'll, uh, he'll fix the problem. I'm not just going to do an inspection, I'm going to further investigate. So we'll call it a homes inspection. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to tell you what's wrong, why, why it's wrong, what shouldn't have been done in the first place, and what I have to do to fix it. Big day, let's roll. We're going to be taking this down today. I want to see where the water's coming in here, OK? I want plastic, obviously, through here. We are going to be in here a little bit, and we're going to be in the basement, right down to where the furnace is, OK? You guys will see it. Have fun. Start with the blue skin. Get going. Okay, this is quite common that we find this because of uh, old carburetors that were installed or even an Insta-Hot that uh, may have been mounted underneath the sink. Clearly, we shouldn't be leaving the line like this. At bare minimum, it should have been in a box made safe so that there's no way that the line would be able to touch any of the copper lines or, or anything else that could be in there. There's some execution waiting to happen. Most municipalities are not allowing carburetors, so um, they're, you know, the, the townships are asking for carburetors to be removed. It's not in every single area, but uh, check with your local area. And uh, if they need to be removed because of a bylaw issue that you may have, have a qualified person remove it, or you can end up having something like this. When they tore down the walls, we actually found a wasp nest up in the side, which told me that there's holes in the outside wall that I have to repair. So everything's out. Now I can put everything back in new and fix this garage. OK, this is where all the issues were. This is where the actual homeowners here thought that the outside tap was actually leaking in here. I see. Mike actually pointed something out, and this is where a big source of the water is actually wow. coming from is right here. You can just see that yeah. moving like that, right? Definitely, yeah. So we know that there's water coming in here. I can actually also see we're missing caulking around this whole sink. But I'm starting to think that there's another issue here. There's way too much water damage here to show just from a tap in a sink. There's no way. Take a look at that supply line uh, to a dishwasher. Um, it's actually, it looks like a homemade oh, fitting. Oh, I see. got a half inch copper, which uh, which been uh, pinched at pinched, the end and then yeah, they soldered it. Soldered, yeah. And you know, seeing this, we don't even know what's going to happen on this on the other side of, of that connection. Right. Directly. To right. What did they? How did they connect over to exactly. this side? Right. Yeah. I'll test it all. Just a whole yeah, test. I'll okay. obviously test it all. Replaced two basket strainers. I installed new tail pieces, which are a lot stronger. Uh, it's a brass versus plastic that was uh, that was previously. I have also done uh, a brand new hose pipe installation with a frost-free unit that's installed outside. I also installed an additional isolation valve uh, with a drain port in case if uh, the water from this section needs to be drained, then it can be accomplished by just unscrewing this uh, drain port, and the water would just simply um, drip away. So, boys, I know there's a leak going on here. Mike pointed out to me yesterday, he peeled off some drywall, and sure enough, we have not only air movement, we have a major leak now. We're playing with the idea, floor to ceiling window here, OK? I want to know what's in this bulkhead. Got to show Mike what's in here, and I want all the trim on here off. Let's take these two bolts off, too, OK? So basically, we're going right from this corner to that corner, everything off from this side, OK, boys?
Sitting water is definitely a problem. I mean, you sit there long enough, there's definitely gonna be mold, mildew. Um, there's also some mouse poo up there, so obviously there's mice getting in, so there's some holes from outside coming inside. Well, we knew that, right? I knew the flashing wow. is brutal. Mouse poop. Wow. Look at that. Disgusting. There's a lot of mice well, getting in here. There's a little bit in the garage, too. That's a lot. That's way too much. I don't know if that's water, actually, guys. It looks kind Look of at that. This is infested. Me. Dude, get your masks on, please. That's dangerous. Find out. Now that is a big nest. That there is a mouse nest. Take the rest down, clean it up. Uh, let's air this place out, keep the front door open for a while, oh, clean oh, everything out. Here. Absolutely, let's get this place ventilated. All right. First things first, the railing's gonna come down. The fact that this is holding water isn't as much of an issue as the fact that it's leaking into the garage. Right. Well, the scupper is just a little bit high, and that's yeah. really the only reason why we have a bit of water here. Like because under... you're right, it really ramps up here. If you feel that, it comes up significantly right here. And I think the biggest problem is, is also this railing. The problem is the wooden posts go right into the That's roof. right. So, you know, the wood's gonna absorb water, it's gonna run in behind. It's, you know, it, it's sort of a it's sort of a bad design in that manner. We're not using wood anymore. There's no way. There's no way that I want anyone to do maintenance out here. Right. Okay, excellent. Just be careful taking off the railing. You wanna leave the railing on for now? You want us to rip it off for you? Uh, what do you might want as well do? just get it out of the way. That way we can just get all the roof right off completely. Then gotcha. we'll know what we're looking at if, if we gotta build up this perimeter. Yeah. Well, this is exactly why we don't want to do a wood railing. It's acting like a sponge. That's why we're going aluminum on top of the flashing that's going to be here. Obviously, signs of damage on the inside indicates that there's leaks everywhere in this window. Number one, you can see it as I walked up, is this roof. The flashing was so messy. I mean, I could have done that when I was five years old and probably done a better job. It was absolutely ridiculous. We had gaps everywhere in it. Now, look at the framing on this. Look at the gaps. That water ever gets in behind that flashing or underneath this roof, where is it going to go? Directly into the freaking house. First thing I noticed was the humidifier when I walked in. The humidifier pad was completely caked. When I removed the panel from the furnace, I noticed right away the burners were completely dirty. The heat exchanger was dirty. So there's gonna be a need, to, you know, they're gonna need to have a duct cleaning done here. There's been a lot of bad carpentry here, a lot of bad ideas going over this bay window. It's one, one of the most important things. You have a little bay window right out front. What's protecting it? is your flashing and your roofing. If that's not done properly, you're destroying the inside of your house, and that's why we're replacing this damn window. Carefully, okay. Now, can you kick the bottom out to us at the same time, MJ? There you go. Keep going to my left. One, two, three, put it in. One, two, three. And again. Oh, we have the window out. Oh, hey, Mike. Yeah, window's out, obviously. Look at this, 20 years old. We have yeah. actual styrofoam in the wall. Now, it's not as good as rigid foam, but yeah. I'll tell you, to actually put that in with a small airspace, that was brilliant for 20 years ago. We did a troubleshoot on the electrical? Uh, yes, we did. It's minor iron. It's very minor here, and they're already in the middle of fixing it. We're changing all the plugs only because it was easier for them to change all the plugs and switches to Decoras because there are so many different types of plugs here. Frank just said, change them all. It's easier for us. Frank's a nice guy. He's a great guy. I also noticed coming up here that that garage roof is on a slope this way. I think this was done by accident. Because yeah. in any standard minimum code for a flat roof, they're going to level it, right? Right. But the brick's not level. Yeah. 
It's not level oh, here. Yeah, good point. I think they did it by accident, yeah. which is to our advantage. <laughs> now, you notice how drunk these studs are? Yes, I did. The triples are completely <laughs> not level. Well, the jack post is, I believe. That's fine. It's holding the block, which is holding the brick. Look at the air movement in the inside. I know. I mean, there's just so much penetration on the outside, which I'm going to have to find as many holes as I can. Well, just them. get that insulation yeah. and push it. Actually, take it out here. As well, long as we can take it out. It's going to spray foam, right? Right. right. What's in it? Oh, my God. Well, that's the first one. There's a few holes in your house. Good to see nice you. to see you. Andrew, now. Right here. Already? Already? Oh, yeah. There was a time when uh, Andrew came home to find me out on the roof of the garage in my Crocs with a hammer about to disassemble the railing because I hated it so much because it's so ugly. So I was delighted to see yeah. it gone. So we found rot glue, correct? Yeah. We found lots of rot. That wood railing was just pulling in moisture. What happened is they tied it right into your membrane and then tried to wrap up the membrane around it and seal it that way. It'll never happen. No, the wood is going to absorb so. the water. It's going to penetrate down. And that's where we saw all the signs on the exterior of water coming in, as well as the front was right where the brick is, our brick sill. So we're going to have to actually replace that as well, because water hitting that is coming in right at the center, right really inside the garage. I'm going to encourage Damon to lose the uh, ceiling here. So we're going to pull the ceiling out because we're going to we're going to use wall tight eco or thermal break over thermal barrier. Do you understand the difference? No. <laughs> glass, glass of water with ice cubes. Yeah. Styrofoam cup with ice cubes in okay. the same water, same temperature. Right. The glass of water will actually condensate on the outside, yeah. sitting in the sun. Uh, this one won't. Okay. Thermal break, thermal barrier. Okay. That's the difference. And we're going to drywall everything with brand new mold resistant wow. drywall. So now I want to take you downstairs okay. and then we're going to come back upstairs. All right. All right. Okay. Follow me. Yeah. Okay, the furnace, it's dirtier than hell. So when we're done, Gary, he's not only going to make sure that your furnace is fine and working order and no cracks and no off gassing, he's going to clean all your ductwork oh, well. for an extra charge of $10,000. <laughs> and we brought in okay. the best electricians in really the country. We have found a lot of small discrepancies, which is good news. We're not rewiring our whole house. However, what are they doing? Well, they replaced your pot light over your sink, and they fixed the wire that was underneath your sink that was live, by the way, for your carburetor that no longer exists. So that's been eliminated. He pulled that right out. That's gone. There was a plug on the other side of the wall that was actually yeah. loose. Mm -hmm. That's repaired, because that's also really dangerous. Yeah. We're right. also replacing every single receptacle and switch in the house. Oh. Wow. Thank you. I'm not going to give you a new kitchen. Yeah. <laughs> as much as you want a new kitchen, I'm going to make it simple yeah, for you to get a new yeah. kitchen. OK, we pull out the window. We've got all kinds of leaks. The window was falling apart in my hands, first of all. It took us basically nothing to pull that window out. It was rotten from the outside, rotting from the inside. It was never properly taken care of. It's a wood window. It needs maintenance. The flashing itself was so bad, and this is what's frustrating, because your neighbor across the street said they've had about three contractors in here to actually look at this window and was never able to repair it. This will be coming out. We'll make sure there's nothing rotten again, and it's going to be rebuilt with brand new windows with two operating nice. left brakes. Beautiful. We've got to keep that <laughs> yeah. cross breeze oh, in. Yeah. <laughs> you mean you couldn't open no, them before? Couldn't open. On this side, there was a crank. It didn't work, like, though. OK, yeah, your yeah, crank was gone. Yeah. Oh, OK. Yeah. It was cranky. Right? Yeah, it was very cranky. It was cranky. cranky. Yes. It was a bad day. That was on Mel's to-do list. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love that. You're the fixer now. Right? <laughs> I expected the front window to be gone. It does look really dramatic, though, because you can see right into the kitchen uh, with that entire window missing. So if you don't have questions, I'll see you at the end of this. Oh, yeah. When I put it back together. Yeah, yeah. And actually, when he puts it back together. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Damon. Thank you, Damon. And if you have any questions, just let me know. Okay. A lot of these issues on this house could have been prevented with basic home maintenance. And any standard minimum code for a flat roof, they're going to level it, right? Right. It's not level oh, here. Yeah, good point. I think they did it by accident, yeah. which is to our advantage. As they came up, they were too high on the right side. Something tells me there was a taller guy on the right and a shorter guy on the left. <laughs> So, Dominic, we're going to go with another bay window here. 
And you're thinking to keep the height because we are going to do two crank windows here, right? Yes. And look at this. This is just rotted, rotted right now. No, I see. I understand that. Because a lot of water problems. Look. What homeowner that's not in construction ever does home maintenance? Not very many. Not it's very few that actually do home maintenance. They come home after work and they're exhausted. They, the last thing they want to do is repaint their windows and caulk them. Oh. So this is what happens. Wood windows rot, right? I'm going to do some flashing around the door to match. That's right. You mentioned that you wouldn't mind doing that for me. That would be fantastic. Again, wood jams on the garage door. And if you look at the bottoms, they're rotting right out. Right Right? So we don't want water on that. No one ever takes care of it. So if we can flash those, that'd be fantastic. Not a problem. So far, we've got a really excellent slope in this direction towards the scupper. This is actually an asphalt primer. Any areas that we want to promote a uh, good adhesion to masonry and wood and such, we can prime with that asphalt primer. And uh, that way, we can get our material bonded well to those areas. What I'm trying to do here is totally seal this garage the way it should have been done. Spray foam first, get the inside of the house insulated so that that's protected, then you drywall, you seal all your gaps. The way it was before it was full of holes, which most garages we see are. No garage has ever been done properly, so here we go again in another garage, fixing it properly. and moisture resistant drywall here, which is blue. Which is really nice because when we're working with the compound, we can actually see where we've worked. Normal drywall, which has no uh, mold resistance or uh, water resistance, uh, it would be white. You know, there's a whole art to everything that we do in sanding, there's an art to it. Most guys will get in there and they want to get a nice crispy line in there, but what happens is they're sanding like this. So after a couple of minutes, they don't even realize it, but they've created a groove, a line. So basically what the trick is, is instead of going up and down, you need to do circles always. Always doing circles, that way you're feathering the compound. Kind of like brushing your teeth. Down and around. The way they had the railings before were very illegal. When you have a railing at the bottom, a railing at the middle, and then a railing at the top, that allows a ladder effect for a child to climb up over and actually fall off the top. So I had MJ just pull everything that was old out. What I'm gonna do is replace it with a vertical railing system that's to code and it's safe for Nora. Now we're gonna replace all the structure, the wooden structure around the window because of the rods, and then we're gonna add rigid insulation. The window is Energy Star rated, CSA certified. The extrusion itself is a high gauge extrusion, so it won't bubble after a few years. The low E glass rejects about 70% of the UV rays in the summertime, so that's where your air conditioning doesn't work as much, and that's where your costs are kept down. We're well on our way to fixing the water problem with the window. It's time to tackle the mess under the sink. What'd you find, bud? Uh, a lot, oh, yeah. a lot of mold. I'd say that's actually uh, growing fur. Get that out of the house right into the bin right away, okay? It's only surface mold. Wash it down. You could probably start adding your framing in for your bottom plate. Okay. And start doing that. Actually, that has more hair on it than your face. I know, right? <laughs> There's a window between us. I think I like it this way. It's pretty important to caulk around any window or any opening like this because you really don't want water getting in your house at all. It creates mold and bugs and who wants that?
deck should not sink if done properly, obviously. So we're just helping it along. We're giving it a little bit more life, a few more years, by just raising it up. Getting some proper structure down to ground. And that's what they didn't have in the first place, was proper footings down to the ground. I'll actually hold it in place. You're perfect. Yeah, that's what I wanted to hear. Look how high this actually came up now. I can't believe how much better it looks. When Martin was finished with the plumbing under the kitchen sink, there was absolutely no way to salvage the old dishwasher. I've never really seen or heard smoke detectors going off because of a vac system. Clogging is the biggest problem. As you can see, there's a lot of hair, dirt built up, even around the light bulb. We all know the light bulbs get hot. If you don't clean the filter, constant problems. This is a roofing underlayment. It's a waterproof membrane that we put on as an underlayment under other roofing materials, which in this case will be aluminum. Typically, um, flashings, uh, chimneys, valley areas, they're the problem areas on a roof. And when you're using a waterproof underlayment, you lessen the risk of potential water infiltration through the roof. These roofs can be covered with various types of roofing material, but if the workmanship isn't tidy and neat and the caulking done properly, then you're gonna have a problem. The way the original roof was done was improper, so the surface mount is the only way to go. They pre-drilled their holes, they caulked their holes, they caulked the base of it, so no water penetrates anywhere where you're gonna have a screw, and that's the way to do it. At the end of the day, a brick sill is no match against a concrete sill. It's always better one piece of concrete instead of a seam every three inches on a brick. This is one of the last things I have to do before Steve can actually finish flashing this roof. Makes me a very happy man. This is completely 100% waterproofed. Stick it up tomorrow. You're gonna put lipstick on? And what did the inspector tell you? I don't even remember if we looked at it with the garage door down. Ah, <laughs> so you walked in, the garage door is open, yeah, nobody looked so. above the garage door. Evidence is always there. This shows that water sits here a lot. If water comes in, what will it do? It's wood, it will damage it. Turns out when I took out one section, I realized that the drywall was so waterlogged that it just came out like paper mache. This is what we're trying to keep warm, and that's why we're spray foaming this part. I see a whole bag of cookies. Where'd you get those from? The neighbor. Help yourself. She made them for us. This looks better than my basement. Isn't that looking great? This is, I think, one of the finest we've ever done. I'm really happy with this garage. This is what happens when I let you go in it, eh? Absolutely. Yeah, and you get cookies. <laughs> and cookies. Okay, furnace. Uh, the furnace has been repaired. It's been cleaned. The duct lines have been cleaned. The furnace itself has been cleaned. It was very dirty. And I noticed we put in a brand new central vac. <laughs> so isn't that nice? And I heard that was totally stuffed dirty. There was some hair wrapped around Some hair, the brush. I talked to him, and he said there was so much hair at the end of it, it was actually burnt. I'm being nice. You're it, being nice. It was disgusting. You gotta stop being nice. I know. All right, let's hope they maintain it. Let's go get them, let's yep. bring them in. Okay. See if they like it. Hey, good job. Thank you. Doesn't it look good? Oh, it looks yeah. amazing. Yeah. yeah. To totally new. You see yeah, what I'm talking well. about, the skirt around the front? Yeah, that way yeah, we don't yeah. see crap underneath it, build right. it oh, properly. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Now, not to mention up on the roof there, right. okay, that it's been completely redone. 
This walkway, if it's, I mean, it looks brand new, doesn't it? Yeah. Looks like it's yeah. never been touched. Yeah. You did that right, buddy, I'm telling you. Yeah. And brought it up to the proper, Beautiful. which was not mentioned by the inspector, right? right? That's right. I tripped yeah. on yeah. it. Yeah. It's, it's the mind thing, right? right? We're used to lifting our foot to a certain height. And all of a sudden, when you have to lift it higher, you trip. See how the flashing is done? And that's the way I want to see it, proper. Yeah. You have a nice new window. It's completely sealed. All the molds pulled out. All the rots pulled out. It's been redone. And you brought a, you know, we had a pro in here taking <laughs> care of it. Had a few pros. You'll see them in a second. Let's go in the garage. I want to take yeah. in there first. Oh! There's even a bag of cookies. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to sleep out wow. here. Wow, this is going to be our new master bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It smells nice, too. And it's clean. <laughs> uh, there's no mold in here. Wow. The garage blew me away. Yeah. Might be the nicest room in the house. Yeah, really. It really is probably the nicest room <laughs> yeah. in the house. Now it's been sort of transformed and we can, you know, we can see really having things well organized. We made sure we put in a brand new uh, central vacuum. Oh, okay. So they cleaned it all out, put in a really good one, and they said it was at the end of its rope anyway. I think it was so one yeah. of the first central vacs ever made. Your furnace. Yeah. It was really dirty. And let me yeah. tell you how dirty it was. And it, it's in the report, so I'm going to spank you. So think of your lungs, you know? If, yeah. if the furnace is that dirty, right. now what are you renting at? Yeah. Okay, so let's stay on top of that once a year. I want you to clean your furnace, okay? okay. Yeah. Once yeah. a year. Yeah. We're going to start fresh, and we're going to... Yeah, we're going to take heed of his <laughs> advice or his warnings, if you will. It's routine maintenance. you gotta got to do it. So we're going to definitely make note of that and ensure that we do keep up uh, proper maintenance. That yeah, is a look at that. serious faucet. That's a beach. <laughs> is that a fire hose? I bet you I can hit him from here. That's it, it's a fire hose. If okay. you look underneath, we remember yeah. Yeah. how rotten this was. Right. Okay? And it like, actually looks brand new again, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Martin, do all the plumbing in here and make sure we ran that new spigot outside. My son actually did the bottom, right? Yeah, Michael? absolutely. He did all wow. the woodwork yep. in here. Yep. While Sherry was working outside, okay. you were talking on the window. Right. I think yeah. there was some sort of confrontation. They were both bickering at each other. So yeah. well, Brother they, and sister. Yeah, yeah. Now we're going to make Make sure that we keep the A clean and B, if it ever leaks again, you phone someone. Not only a new faucet, but we give you a new dish. Oh my God! <laughs> because we could not hook up anything to that old, dusty yeah, yeah, dishwasher yeah. you guys had here. Yeah, yeah. I could not fix it properly. I had to give you a new one. A new dishwasher. Right? <laughs> I feel like I'm on the price of right. Yeah. <laughs> and the vision of the window oh, brought the ductwork forward. Wow. Instead of trying to put it up into the bench, and created a new bench for you. Oh, I hope you guys like oh, this. Like this. Oh. Do you see all that trim beautiful. on the inside, yeah. on the top? Yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. And look at your screens. You pull those two levers down. Oh, you're no like that. <laughs> so you can open your windows and place. So you know, oh, no one yeah. wants to look through a screen, right? Right. No one wants to look through a screen to look out their front window, so you can lift them. Wow. Wow. Everything's fabulous, but um, the new bay window. Is just sort of transform the entire the entire kitchen, like it's just I can imagine myself sitting in there relaxing. You know, it's just uh, yeah, they just did a tip top job. Okay, there's a few things I want to talk about. Uh, I had the guys <laughs> lift the deck up. What's happened with the rails here? Do we see any? Yeah, they're vertical instead of horizontal. All right. Yeah, now, yeah. that was missed by the inspector. Yeah. We're not allowed yeah. anything right. horizontal in Canada. Yeah. You are allowed to do it in the States, but not Canada. Right. Here, we should use common sense no matter mm -hmm. what. I don't care where it is, yeah. you should use common sense. Go vertical, they can't climb on it. The gas pipes. They had one shot off underneath the deck in the wrong spot, so we put in one shot off at the meter where it should be. Wow. One shot off right there. That's about the best outdoor gas barbecue yeah, outlet awesome. I've yeah. seen. Okay. <laughs> Are you happy? Oh. More than happy. Yeah. It's fabulous. Yeah, it's yeah. amazing. Thank you so yeah. much. No worries. Well, Absolutely. We take care of the, the big problems. You can take care of the little problems. Yeah. yeah. Good. Nice meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks Thank a lot, Dave. No worries. Thank Are you, you kidding me? Thank you so much. No yeah, worries. Crazy. You can hug him. He spent my Well, yeah, the hug. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we all went <laughs> Yeah, I flipped one for you here. <laughs> my name's Mike. Want to shake my hand? Nice to meet you. Did you draw me a poster? Oh, uh, that's for my dad. Oh, this is cute. Thank you for fixing our house. Is this me here? That's that, a saw. That, is that a saw? I knew it was some sort of tool. <laughs> Not an old house. 
it's malt house. I expected a trained professional to at least walk me through the issues. Oh my god, that's a fire hazard. Holy crap. We're here to solve the electrical and mold issues that are okay. huge. You can see everything in here that I'm seeing that wasn't in the report. We feel like we've been had, so you just, oh, that anger is there, so. James and Doreen were thrilled at the opportunity of buying a house that they could afford and was big enough for their growing family. They even insisted on a home inspection, but unfortunately were robbed of the opportunity to be present for that inspection. Now they have growing mold problems so bad they can't even use some of the rooms in the house, and they are terrified of the electrical issues simply because they have children. I'm gonna find out what's wrong, and I'm gonna make it right. Before we bought our new home, we lived in an apartment. We've been there for about nine years, and with the three children, we needed room to expand and let them have fun, and we said, okay, this is it. This is time to start looking for our new home. Buying the house, it, it is a bit of a dream come true. Uh, the space and whatnot, its location, I mean, it fit all our needs. It gave us greater, greater space inside and amazing space outside. We have a huge backyard, a lot that barbecuing, badminton, there's so much space that the baby can just run around and go crazy and that we've never experienced before. So it was a big deal to, when we saw this at home, that this was it. In the process of buying the home, we went to a mortgage broker and uh, they took care of the home inspection because that was part of the clause. You get your funding and the home inspection. The only problem was I never got to go to the home inspection. <laughs> I was waiting at work, waiting for the home inspector to come in and uh, call me, and nobody called. It was later that evening that I got that a call evening. from the realtor saying, oh, the, we already did the home inspection, don't worry, everything's fine, and you'll get the report in a few days. I was upset when it, because I did want to go to that home inspection. I wanted to point things out and have it, a home inspector look at it and say, does this make sense? Does this look right? And I never got that chance to yeah. do that. We don't have like tons of money, so obviously as anybody out there, we want the price to be negotiated based on the home inspection. And not being there for the home inspection just, you know, it took the crutches out from under us. Hey, James. Yeah, I'm Mike. How you doing? Doreen. Hi. Nice to meet you. <laughs> the home inspection report read to me like a how-to manual. I didn't really get much out of it. Okay, this looks pretty good. No handrail downstairs, not in the report. After you, please. We moved in, and of course, the kids, they want their own rooms, and my one daughter was going to be with the baby in the front room. I know, I went in there, I started to check it out. What are we going to do in here to get it ready? And uh, I happened upon the closet, which was originally obstructed by a side table, and lo and behold, there's mold there. I can smell it. So we see mold definitely right in the closet, right in the base of the closet here. Did you notice anyone in the house with uh, watering eyes, lots of sneezing? Well, a lot of coughing. We have coughing issues. OK. Right now, it appears we have an issue. I can smell it in the air. I am worried. And we should leave this room and close up this door and try and keep this door closed for your kids. This is the access to the attic. Was this was sealed. The attic was silicone shut preventing access, and the home inspector was not to go in there. All right, let's take a look while I'm here. After moving in, of course, we went in there, broke the seal, and yeah, found that to be all black up above on the sheeting. We have mold. We have water marks everywhere. All kinds of electrical issues, new tying into old. Oh my god, that's a fire hazard. Holy crap. We definitely felt the electrical was a mess of the microwave. If you plug that in and tried to use the toaster, it, it, things just shut off and on on you. You could be sitting in the living room and the lights flicker on and off. I might as well close this crap up. I don't think I'm going to be going in there and I'm not going to be a happy camper. I was in the bathroom and I decided, oh, I'm, where is the plug? I was looking for it and my daughter said, oh, look, it's at the base of the cabinet, mommy. In a very dangerous spot. Think of the kids in the tub. What do kids do? You know, my kids did it. They're in the tub, they're splashing, they're playing, and we got a receptacle so low on the floor. I went and plugged it in, okay, it worked. 
Then they would turn back again. You know, it didn't work. There's water all over this floor, and the kids get out of the tub, and they're standing in the water, and that water's trickled underneath this cabinet right under here. The electrical line is touching the floor. What is, what is going to happen to the kids? They're 100% grounded. And the possibility of my children or any children at all being harmed due to absolute stupidity is unacceptable. But even more unacceptable is that this was not in the report. Is it wired right? No! <laughs> wired wrong? Jeez, go figure. Okay, okay, okay. We thought this is it. This is the dream house that we've been waiting for, and now it's turned into a nightmare. A lot of problems with this house. There'll be a lot of things to fix. Damon is not gonna like me anymore. I see mold spores across the bottom of the baseboard. Is it enough to create a lot of spore counts in the air? The answer is yes. If I was an inspector, I would have said you've got a lot of problems with this house. Never mind what I can't see. It's what I can see. Now, when the other home inspector was in here, obviously this was a completed kitchen. You know, and there's nothing he's going to see inside the walls, which I'm fine with. He's not. Uh, he doesn't have x-ray vision, he can't see through the walls. He does, we do have tools that he can use, but it's not gonna see what we wanna see. However, as soon as you look under the sink, what do we see? This is the stuff that's in front of his eyes that is not in the report, okay? We have the drain, no clean out, that's nothing, that's minor, okay? So everything's set up, but where is the drain for the dishwasher? It's past the trap. Vent gases can come back up and escape through openings of the drainage. And code says it must be before the trap. What else is in front of my eyes that's under this sink? Let's see. <laughs> I don't know. Electrical with water? That's a live line. Not in the report. There's an extension cord hanging out of, where does that go to, do you know? Attic. Attic. OK. Let's go downstairs. <laughs> We've basically been living down here because the upstairs uh, kitchen was a wreck. There was a whole bunch of issues up there, and we started to notice it smelled like pee. So I started to take down the ceiling. It was all mouse, and lo and behold, more morets, more tape. So we have actually all kinds of electrical junction tie-ins, so we have electrical issues within the home. Look at this. Ooh, that is not the way to do that. Furnace room time. This is the dryer. What? That's the dryer. That's the dryer hose. This is the dryer vent. Yes. Yeah. The dryer vent. That's the vent you're seeing outside that it was there's never the, attached. The cheek oh. for All right. And I guess these are things you're noticing, and this was yeah. not in the report. But electrically, right here, we've tied what? OK, look at this. This is, like, really not good. They needed a box here to plug in the extension cord. They cut into the line, ran the line for the plug, and just for the hell of it. It's pretty because I have a tester. Oh, look, we have no light. That's how the light's working in this room, too. Is it wired right? No! <laughs> and how did you miss everything else? How did you miss the humidifier? How did you miss the electrical, the plumbing, the venting? And did he even check this filter? Look at this filter. That filter has been on the furnace way too long. A lot of problems in this room alone. We're not in a position to, you know, start paying. Now fork for out for repairs. electrical, plumbing, mold. It's, it's, it's too much. It's, it's overwhelming. It's utterly overwhelming, and I mean that's the key phrase here. I do see signs of water penetration from the attic. Right here, there I definitely see mold. I see a lot of mold right here and water signs that it was leaking in this area. With insufficient airflow in the attic and allowing hot air to escape the house into the attic, hot air is meeting cold air, creating condensation on the underside. And that's why we're molding. You know what, I think the homeowners are smart enough to see that once they got the house, one plus one equals two, two plus two equals crap, something's wrong. The doors are sealed up to the attics. There's electrical issues, there's plumbing issues. Something's wrong. Oh my God, look at pull out the carpet. What do you see? I see mold spores across the bottom of the baseboard. We're starting to look at things and things are wrong. Supposedly, the inspector could not go in those areas, but shame on him. There was enough to see. I don't, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm harping on this because there was enough to see. 
We need to educate the homeowners, but we need to give them the truth on what's wrong with the house. And there's a good thing here. Nothing's happened to the kids or the homeowners to date other than the possibility of breathing in the spore count of the mold, which is enough, and nothing else has happened. Right now, with all those electrical junctions and paperback insulation, think about that. It's the old insulation, paperback insulation in that attic, and they've cut the wires and tied in, and these lines heat up because of all the pod lights and everything. They run in conjunction with the electrical lines in there. What does it take to light paper when it comes to electrical? Not much. Electrical outlets must be a certain height off the floor. Now, just imagine the water running across the floor, touching this receptacle, and someone standing there. Not a good scenario. This is not right. And this is the least amount, whether or not he bent down to take a look here. Did he even bend down to take a look in the drain here to see that the pop-up's in the wrong location or that there's no clean out on the trap? Is it in the report? No. I'm wondering, what the hell did you look at? Morons were on a washer and dryer. And the dryer itself is tapped into that plastic pipe that we saw down in the furnace room. And this is just like sloppy crap. This is, you can see the line in the camera that the exhaust line is completely squished and not exhausting out and just allowing more moisture in here. Think of all the moisture just, just from this dryer here. Look at the plumbing coming through the floor. This washer and dryer, the plumbing, the electrical to it, the exhaust of the dryer was not in the report. And by the way, is this a good spot to push the washer and dryer when we have a nice sized basement? Two stoves would be two 40 amp breakers. There's one 40 amp breaker, there's a 30 amp breaker, and no other double 40. So what does that tell you? There's two stoves, there's one double breaker. Did they wire them together? Not allowed. Totally against code. I am seeing so many junction points. Just simply taking an old line to a new Romex line, and it's totally not allowed. It must be accessible. Remember, James pulled this drywall down. And the home inspector's not going to see this. That's, that's very apparent. So for all the home inspectors to go, Mike, he's not going to see this. It was drywall. I get that. But what about all the electrical things that were in front of my eyes, like in the furnace room, like under the sink where it shouldn't be, like the receptacle at the base of the cabinet? I see enough electrical issues throughout the house that warrants an issue with electrical. And how far does it spread? I'm just going to take you upstairs, show you a few things, and I'm going to apologize now to you. Uh, uh, that's a bad way to start our conversation. Yeah, well, this, this way, it won't feel so bad okay. after I take you through the house and realize what we're going to be doing. You're apologizing, okay. This is a side split, right? Yeah. So take this light yeah. and take a look and tell me what you see. Okay, junction boxes, wires hanging, I see a roof leaking, I see improper insulation. We're very, very stale in there, right? Yeah, so there's no ventilation. We have improper ventilation. We actually have vented socks. Do you see some in there? Okay. But I believe they went directly over wood. So the homeowner notices all of a sudden Minor surface mold of the baseboard here. He's pulled the carpet back. He's starting to panic now because he has his kids. Yeah. And he, you know, he stops. He doesn't know what to do because he's got his kitchen. He's opened up a few things. Yeah. Actually, he's opened up more, and I'll show you that. We see the surface mold across the wall. Yeah. We see no signs of leakage coming in whatsoever from the top. Surface mold again. Now, this is a closet that has surface mold, and it continues down. Minor as we get lower, but more on the high side. This means that there's no air circulation up here. There's Very no air good movement. so far. Very good. So we have the washer and dryer here. We have the plumbing coming through the floor. We have the supply feeds coming through the floor. If this was running full time, if it's not vented properly, you think there's moisture coming off of this? Oh, you're doing good so far. Keep that thought. But James pulled this drywall down. Because he starts wanting to check feeds, right? Because he's starting to think. He's smart enough to put one on one together. Yeah. Two stoves, one dryer. One breaker, double 40, one breaker, double 30. Yeah. So how is it wired? We see a junction yeah. without a box. A junction. Oh, wow. A Not junction. even a junction. They're just and taped together. They're everywhere oh, throughout this house. Now let's just, for the hell of it, step into the furnace room. Look at this. So somebody's put in a receptacle. They tapped into the blue line to power this, to run an extension cord, to tie into the light that sits oh. here, OK? This is the exhaust for the dryer. You got to be joking. No, OK, this oh. is the exhaust. Now let's put, let's put this all together. Okay. It's not exhausting properly outside. It's letting all the moisture 
Very upstairs. good. Very good. So why do you think that we had so much surface mold in the house? Well, first of all, there's no air circulation. It would have been humid in here. The moisture would have built up and started eating at the organic material on the walls. Very good, sir. Let's see if we can bring it back to a comfortable first time home buy and not an absolute nightmare that they are, they are freaking out right now and okay. I can't blame them. This is not a small job. It's a big house. It's a big house and we have a lot of mold. We have kids bathing here, splashing around, Frank. Now, what do you think of that? They missed that on the home inspection? They missed that on the home inspection. Let's make the house safe for them. Okay, can I pick some new colors for this place? Uh, I, I have full faith in you, man. You can do you can do pretty well what you want. You're, you're, you're in control. Thank God, because the colors in this house is one thing the inspector should have caught. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> We have mold. We have water marks everywhere. The children have been coughing. He's been coughing. We've done our best to block off rooms and tape up what we could, but it's not enough. The first thing I want in here is a test for air quality to see if we have an issue to get them the hell out of the house right now. This is a hard one. James and Doreen and their three kids had to move out on a moment's notice. They knew there was mold. They had no idea how bad it was until we called in the company to take the air test and actually tell them how bad it was. We have a level one, we have a level two, and a level three. This is not a small job. It's a big house. It's a big house and we have a lot of mold. We're gonna uh, make the whole house a level three, except for the living room dining room. So uh, we've uh, decided to make this the, the negative air chamber in here and put all their personal belongings in right. there and everything else to level three, category right. three. That means we're gonna have respirators in here when we start tearing down. Yeah. We're going to have all the equipment that we need to, to follow the, uh, the rules, regulations for mold. They have to isolate this whole house. They have to work in every room where they had a reading. They have to keep going until they found no mold left in the house. Only then can they do another air test to tell me that it's clean. I'm not bringing anyone in here until the house is clean. The 520S was a product that was designed by NASA originally. It's a biological, which is a, a bacterial product that actually consumes the mold. We cold fogged it, and it gets into every crack, every crevice, which you cannot do without removing things, like removing the roof to get at the top parts of the trusses, where a cold fogging will actually work into it and get rid of the, the mold. It's very important to deal with any mold problem you have right now. Number one, what you see is not what there is there. It's, it's the way to explain it is like an iceberg. What you see on top of the water is not all that is there. It's what you don't see which is the problem. When the remediation team was in the attic removing the insulation, they noticed mold on top of the ceiling drywall. That's why it had to be removed. They also removed any drywall in any bedrooms or closets that still had visible mold on them. What we do is oversee the mold abatement projects. We do the inspection work, inspect the level of cleanliness, ensure that all the mold has been removed. Once the mold removal has been completed by the contractor, we come in and uh, take air samples to ensure that all the mold has been remediated. Now that the mold has been removed and the work areas are clean, we're gonna spray a special paint called an encapsulant which is a mold inhibiting paint uh, that will seal the attic and ensure that any mold growth that may be left behind will be sealed uh, and won't affect the air quality uh, from here on. We are back. We have a positive air quality test. I'm allowed to bring the guys back in. It's been a long time coming. I have to get in that house and start working on it. The biggest reason we're here is mold and electrical, okay? The electrical is a mess. Carl, you just pointed out earlier, you saw the electrical in the corner there. It's an extension cord tied into what? We don't even have any clue. There's problems everywhere. They've spliced 220 into aluminum wiring. aluminum wiring. I mean, the list goes on. This might be a full gut, not saying full gut in all the drywall everywhere, but it's gonna be patches everywhere. So, ready? 
get at it. I guess so. OK, let's go. There's already a lot of drywall damage, and I'm only going to create more. Instead of trying to work around the furniture, I'm just going to move it into a storage bin. It's just me and you, sweetie. You ready to come to my place for a little while, a little vacation? It'll be OK, baby. Mike's afraid that it's a full rewire. Um, how about if I, we make a bet right now that it is. So at a point like this when it's already open, yeah. the idea is rewire it now. Now it makes sense to get it done. Everything I'm finding in this home, especially in the attic, is open air connections. So we got outlets buried under the insulation with extension cords running around going into the kitchen. It's either guy was stupid, whoever did it. Everything I've been finding in this home, this is now, doesn't surprise me. Oh, look at this. This here is basically called an open air connection. There's no box that's containing the wires. Imagine now you have, um, there's a spark, there's an arc. Well, it's encased in that box. It's got nowhere to go. Well, this is, you got, what, it was like a quarter inch away from the wood. You have some arcing, like if the plug is defective, you have some arcing, some sparking, you're like not even a quarter inch. It, there's a chance there of fire. It's not safe. We're gonna do it right. I took the bulkheads out in the kitchen so I can get my new cabinets up to full height. Since I've done that, I might as well take down the rest of the ceiling instead of trying to patch it. These kind of I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be vented out somewhere. It's not. We know there's improper ventilation because the attic was filled with mold. Let's take a look in there. You want to get in the attic? Is that that, <laughs> that, that hole that big and I'm this big? Um, where's Steve? Steve's bigger than me now. What are you... Is this enough access for you, bud? Holy crap. <laughs> it was that bad, eh? Yeah, it was that bad. So we need to get up there and just sort of check the vents, make sure, but yeah. it's guaranteed they're probably not. Like, you look at this, right? These vents are designed for a proper size hole, yeah. right? Well, that one's small. This one here is not even one third of the size. Oh my God. Because they're on a beam. That looks like it's been whacked with a hammer. It sends up red flags that you, we want to do a really yeah. thorough roof inspection. Right. Because when you see stuff like that, that's red flags. Mm -hmm. If they're doing stuff like that, what else are they doing? So the existing issue with the attic on this home was that it wasn't vented properly, both with the roof fence as well as these soffits um, not being open enough with the plywood coverings, uh, as well as the attic insulation, which was blown in and filling most of the openings. So what we're doing here is we're, we're going to cut large openings around the perimeter of the house to allow the cooler fresh air into the attic, correcting the soffits, the roof fence, and the attic insulation with proper uh, baffles is going to really get the airflow going in this attic. That's the hole you went through. Yeah, me and Andrew. I want videotape. I don't believe this. <laughs> like, our hands are tied behind your back, because you only make so much, and you can only fix so much at a time. The problem is, is that the report itself is worth garbage, because it did not tell you what's wrong with this house. Hey, Mike. Mr. Bennett. How's it going? Ready Good. Ready How's it going job, with you? Was... Oh, not too bad. As you can see, we're missing ceilings. Yeah, they're taking them all down, eh? Well, did you see the bin? Yeah. <laughs> the bin's full. OK, so how much mold? Oh, every floor. It was obviously the attic was 
infested with mold. They basically had to gut all the ceilings because of the amount of mold that was in the attic. They pulled all the insulation. They were determining that it was on the, bo uh, the back of the drywall, so they wanted to pull everything just to make sure they got all the mold out. They did a great job. So we're gonna rewire the house, plumbing. <sighs> yeah. We're gonna rough in their kitchen. We've already sort of laid it out and uh, we're gonna have an installer come in and install it for us. You know what, let's not waste time, let's go get them. James, Doreen. Hi. Hi. How you doing? Hi, Doreen, good to see you. How are you? Yeah. I'm sorry that uh, you've been in a hotel for, what, a month now? Yeah. yeah. How's that been? Uh, Not too great. <laughs> <laughs> we want to go home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I got some bad news about that one. You're not coming home anytime soon, but not too long. We're going to hope for about three weeks here now that we've got to this stage, and I'll show you. Actually, why don't you come in? Okay. Damon's been working rather hard. Alrighty, so Damon went ahead and pulled the ceiling. Was it you or was it? We pulled this ceiling, yeah, but there was parts of it that were already pulled. You're gonna notice that their ceiling's pulled all over this house. Now, you know we did an air test. We had to get you out of the house. So we brought in the mold guys, and holy crap and a half. You can see that all of the sheathing in your attic space was completely molded, right? So they've gotta go in and they gotta strip it, they're gonna seal it, that's why it looks white, because now it's sealed. I would never in my wildest dreams realize it could be this bad. Let me explain why. We have an exhaust fan in the kitchen that exhausts into the attic only, does not exhaust the outside. That's one. Two, all your soffit all the way around the house is a vented soffit, but there's plywood under it with no holes. So air is not moving from outside up through the soffit into the attic space and out through the vents, which even the vents are very poor. And if he was on the roof, I'm sure he could have noticed. Let's talk about the electrical for a sec. The electrical, all the pot lights in the house are wrong. They're all wrong. They don't go into the attic space in that style of pot lights. A retrofit, it is not a canister that is proper for an attic space that is an air sealed box, a fire rated box because of insulation and other things that are in the attic that can cause a fire. So you could have had a fire from the pot lights. You could have had a fire from all the electrical tie-ins throughout the whole house. So we are going to rewire the whole house. For me, I thought the electrical was the most extreme and it turns out it's the mold that was worse than anything else. Like, Well, they're very comparable. <laughs> <laughs> one makes you sick and one can kill you. So, so you're getting sick while you're here and you have the potential for death all along the time. Let's go upstairs right now, I'll explain a little more, okay? So we have cut out everything that's to do with mold. You can see that the electrical is being started and wow, does your sheathing look good in your attic, eh? <laughs> <laughs> this gives you an idea because all the, all the ceilings are like this everywhere except the living room. And we can work over top of that. We're trying to save that ceiling and all that cold molding. Home inspectors should be equipped fully, absolutely fully to inspect a house. I mean, tools galore. Attic, 100% access, otherwise the home inspection doesn't happen. It should be it's really that simple. <laughs> Let's go downstairs and I'll explain a couple more things. <laughs> if he does not have access, he walks away. How hard is that to implement into a policy or a law? All the plumbing here was wrong, we know that. All the electrical here was wrong. We're gonna pull this floor. We're going to give you new carpet. We're gonna give you allergenic carpet. So we're gonna really think about cleaning the air in the house. So it's a lot of work to do this, but we're gonna do this. This is, this is what this is all about, is helping you, okay? Yeah. Keep smiling. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. I'll see you soon. Yeah. We weren't present during the home inspection, so we, you know, we couldn't add anything to it, you know, what can you do? Like, the guy's gonna say what he's gonna say and write it up and that's it, so. You wrote a beautiful 20-page report, but um, there's no substance to it. What's the easiest thing in the world to do right now? Come in here, I could have laid another floor right over top of this. We're not gonna do that. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna crack on me. We're actually gonna prep this floor properly by taking it back down to the original subfloor and not just go over crap. This line here is the line that's going up to the dryer. This other line is the stove line. So, <laughs> again, speechless, idiots, stupid. Here's another thing. No box, couple of screws, extension cord wire. That's not safe at all. Things like this, these are these are fire hazards. These are big risks. It's it's danger it's danger to life. 
pieces of wire here, pieces of wire there, open air connections. We got more open air connections that are up in this corner. Clear as day, clear as day. There's a lot of things here that are right in the open that should have been caught. If you ask me, he walked around with his eyes closed. He does have a kitchen in the garage that we need to take out today and sort of do a layout, because I have no idea what his layout is yet. What is evidence in front of my eyes is enough to speak loudly. Something's wrong. It's an eye opener, that's for sure. It's, but this is the education that we needed to have to understand what's happening and where do we go from here. Let's get this down before Carl comes this way. He's going on pretty fast on those tiles for a change. So I want to open this straight up so that there's no debris getting in his tiles, okay? they bought were a display model yeah. so it really couldn't work properly in the space so we had to add some cabinets to make right. it work so things were done a little bit backwards they, exactly. they bought the kitchen by looking at it they yeah. bought it and then tried to make it work and it, right. it was never gonna happen no it was never gonna work they're getting a, a brand new fridge they're getting a new dishwasher right and they're getting a, a stainless steel telescopic exhaust fan Last but not least, countertops. Countertop, exactly. The countertops are coming in. We had them measured today. Right. Um, and they should be installed by probably Monday at this point. We have Thursday today. You're going to be done tomorrow? Oh, yeah. Yes, we will. I'm a happy man. It's been a crazy few days. We still have a lot of work to do. We're still patching holes. I mean, the electricians have knocked holes in every single room, as they do in a rewire, of course. But, you know, we're chasing them down, and we're patching behind them. The tankless system gets hooked up today, meaning the gas hook up to the tankless. It's the last stage. I still have to do spray foam and blown in insulation in the attic. But before I do that, I have to run all my new vents through the roof. So I need Steve Graves from Better Contracting back. Well, this is one of the vents we saw from the attic that uh, they cut about a one inch hole. The basic size of the hole should follow sort of this dimension of the vent. What we have here is not a very big hole. Now, there is a rafter here, but uh, that doesn't really come into play when you cut the vent a proper size, so it's just sort of ridiculous. So we'll be putting in a quartz countertop. Uh, Mike really likes quartz, uh, so do you. And yeah. I like them, I have one at home. So they're beautiful. It's, it's yeah. Well, and this is what they wanted. This is not the original countertop we have for them, but I think they're gonna like this one even better. Yeah. We always wanna go bottom out when we do quartz. Oh, 95%. There's no other option. 95% of solid surface tops are undermount. And right. that's what people want if they really understand what it's all about. Right. Once they use it, they love it. Yeah. Because everything just wipes into the sink. You don't have the ridge, you don't have the gump, you don't that's have it. any of that stuff. The best way to go. in today, which is fantastic. It allows me to actually get my backsplash on. Now, I probably picked the hardest backsplash you'll ever want to do in your life. Instead of having a 12 by 12 square tile that you can just put up, or let's say a six by six, a four by four tile to put up, I actually went with, what, one inch tiles, I have half inch tiles, and it's all on one mesh pad. Now, when I go to put this on the wall, what's it going to want to do? It's going to want to squish together like this. All the pieces end up falling together, your joints all get tight. You can actually see here that we have tight joints, tight joints, tight joints. So really what I have to do is I'm laying it 
we have to put spacers in every single joint. Everything wants to sag on me. So by putting spacers, it keeps all your joints even and true. It's a pain in the butt, but it's gonna look fantastic when we're done. Considering it is a homes job and there's still 20 other trades we're working around, we're trying to get everybody in today, get it all done, tomorrow we'll be left with touch-ups. This was a big job. We stayed here till about nine o'clock last night, just finishing things off, you know, but we always do it. We always finish it off in time, whether it takes a few late nights or not, we always get it done. It's a little bit of everything, you know, get things going, walk away, finish things, come back, you know, that's what we do, kind of help each other out, depending on the tasks and uh, what has to be done. So we're just kind of bouncing back and forth and that's what's uh, fun about this job is that you don't get stuck doing the same thing all the time. You can move around and do different things all the time, right? We've been here for a freaking long time. It feels like I've actually moved into this house. Everyone's exhausted. Everyone's been working really late. These guys, like I've been bouncing around from job to job. This crew has stayed here the whole time and actually accomplished this job. It's great. How you doing, man? Mike, how you doing? Wow. You like? That's a whole new freaking uh, kitchen. Yeah. I'm really impressed. I'm telling you, you've, you've got it down. Thank you, man. Well, it's the people around me, that's, right? That's better than I expected. I appreciate that. So this is the other tile pad Sherry laid. Gives the kids something to walk in from, being muddy or wet. That's well, a smart idea if you think yeah. that it's winter outside and you're coming in the back door. Yeah. Let's not ruin this beautiful new carpet. There's Shelly. Oh, there's the turtle. Isn't she cute? Yes. <laughs> Are you gonna miss her? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we've had she'd, I'd get home, her. Mike, and she'd come up to the top of the water and splash. She's probably starving, but uh, you know, I took it as affection. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, this is great. I didn't expect to go this far in the basement, but uh, this is great. Not only does he not have to come home and finish the kitchen, he actually has a laundry room he can use. Yeah. Not in the wrong spot that's just totally not working right, not vented, not anything, and creating mold. He doesn't have to come and finish the basement. He doesn't have to fix the electrical. He doesn't have to fix the plumbing. He doesn't have to fix the furnace. He doesn't need a new carpet. He doesn't need to paint. Man, you more than made it right. Thank you. Hey, folks. Long time no see. Hi, Hi Doreen. Hi, Good to you? see you. James. James. How, are you? how are you? We're doing <laughs> the crisscross here. Yeah. So you happy we're about to bring you home? Yes, wow. absolutely. It's about time. Well, let's start by walking around the back. So we brought your turtle back home. <laughs> so you no longer have a laundry room in an area where it's not supposed to be. You do have all new carpet, and this is a hyperallergenic. It's uh, good for the kids, good for you. Everything that we try and do is all the drywall in the house is mold resistant. Everything we use is environmentally friendly. Let's take a look at the basement. Damon did something I really like, and he actually got a kitchen. Put in a proper laundry room. Put in an HRV system, heat recovery ventilation, that will allow to pull in fresh air, constantly move through the air through the house, because this house was a major breathing problem. Yeah. It had a breathing problem. All the lines run throughout the conduit, and I love this system, I really do. So this has all been fixed, all your electrical's been fixed, you have a tankless hot water system. This fires when you open the tap, right? Yeah. So it never keeps heating the tank again, so I'm hoping you wanted to put one of these in. Oh, definitely. <laughs> but you got one. Big plus. All right, let's go upstairs. This bedroom obviously was another big sign that you found the mold, right? Yeah. On this wall here. Yeah. The closet. Right. You remember seeing all the openness. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Damon did something really extra that I liked. So all vertical walls that are inside the attic, he brought in Alex, our spray foam specialist, 
and spray foam that wall. That stops the, the cool in the summer losing into the attic and vice versa in the winter, the cool coming back into the house. Not to mention running in all brand new uh, cellulose. Rob's guys came in and put in new downspouts, ease troughs, the smart screen, and Steve put in new roof vents with the proper size openings. Then they cut holes in the soffits so that we had the proper amount of ventilation in the attic. Now we know the house breeze. Now we know the attic breeze, bringing in soffit venting, everything that was necessary that this house did not have, and it should have been in the report as far as I'm concerned, the breathability. Just, it, it, it feels livable. I mean, you could feel it. Standing here, it, it, I'm in a different house right now. It's literally a different house. <laughs> Take a look, because I had the wow factor. Damon pulled out the wall, gave me an open concept. Now come into your kitchen. Is this nice or what? Oh, wow. <laughs> and to think we weren't going to give you a kitchen. I know. Look at, oh, you got a new fridge. Yeah. I know. I, that's what I said. I said, look at the fridge. I don't have a fridge you like that. Step in that thing. <laughs> and you look at it. Look inside it. Oh Open up the fridge. Come on. <laughs> Somebody got you. Fruit platter. <laughs> Fruit platter. The electrical's right. The plumbing is right. <laughs> I can cook again. <laughs> it's fantastic. All I can say is wow. <laughs> Edwin came yep. in and worked with Damon on the design of the mm -hmm. kitchen, and I hope you really like it. It's very functional. I love your double wall oven. Love it. I love the countertop. You know what type of countertop this is? Quartz. Yes. 100% <laughs> non-porous. Mm -hmm. I love this tile. I walked in and went, oh my god, who picked the tile? Damon picked the tile. Yes. Mr. Designer. Mr. Designer. <laughs> Try and match that with this floor. It was pretty hard. I could imagine. <laughs> New hood. Yeah. I, I mean, oh, I just think God. this is stunning. I don't see all the trades here, but honestly, I'd like to thank them from the bottom of my heart. It is Definitely. the amount of work they put into this. Uh, I'd like to thank them so sincerely for what they've done. It is phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Now, Please tell me if you're happy. Do I got to take something down and fix it? <laughs> you're happy? <Yes. laughs> Thank you. Because you haven't been saying much. And I, can, I can only think that you're in shock. Still taking but. it in. Awesome, awesome. That's Absolutely great. awesome. Oh my gosh. It's beautiful. Holy smokes. <laughs>